Good morning, Osim. Um, it's nice to be here today. Nice to see all of you. Um, I'm Jonathan. I'll be doing prayer meeting for um, this month of April. Um, so today, the passage that we will be reading from is Ezekiel chapter 24, verses 25 through 27, which says, um, And you, son of man, on the day I take away their stronghold, their joy and glory, the delight of their eyes, their heart's desire, their sons and daughters as well. On that day, a fugitive will come to you tell, come to tell you the news. At that time, your mouth will be opened. You will speak with him. You will no longer be silent. So you will be assigned to them, and they will know that I am the Lord. So in this excerpt from chapter 25, 24, excuse me, God is dressing Ezekiel and informing him of the sign of the fall of Nebuchadnezzar's siege of Jerusalem. Um, everything that they treasured and owned would be stripped from them and destroyed. It was only after this that God would allow Ezekiel to speak as he was mute before. The meaning in all of this is that from the ashes of destruction, Ezekiel's new ability to spread the gospel is what brings hope and encouragement to the people. That in the destruction, God is able to rebuild and that it would be glorious. Through the adversity and ruins, God's action of removing all joy and hope and the rebuilding would be a sign that reveals to the nations his power and that he is Lord. Um, it seems all too relevant now as we witness aspects of society slowly unravel in this global pandemic. The things we are used to in the past are being taken away as we adapt to a new lifestyle. The joys and desires of the past are being confiscated and, our current, and in our con current circumstance, at least for me, it can feel like we're living in ruins. But in all of this, we know that our Lord is God, that our God is Lord. And with our Lord, anything is possible and that we will make it through this difficult time. And when we do, the return or rebuilding of our normal lives will be glorious, and it is God who shines through all of it. So in the light of Palm Sunday, a day we commemorate as Jesus rode on a donkey into Jerusalem, the essence of this day is honoring and praising the Lord for who he is, our King. Amen. This brings us to our first prayer point for today. So let us pray in praise and gratitude for who the Lord is, that he is, the, that he is king and for the, all he has done in our lives. So let's take this time um, to enter in a time of prayer. Um, so, yeah. Lord, um, thank you for this morning and for who you are, our King, Lord. And we just um, pray and praise and in gratitude for um, who you are and what you've done for us in our lives, Lord, and for your provision and allowing us to have this time um, to be online, um, to fellowship and to um, experience service remotely, Lord. I just pray um, that we never lose sight of who you are in all of this, Lord, um, that you are our Lord and our Savior, Lord, and we just... Um, Lift all these things up to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. 
So in this time of quarantine, um, it is quite different and possibly weird for us to not be able to spend our Friday nights and our Sunday mornings with our church family. Um, and in this time away from one, one another and with fellowship and service being held online, it's easy to be distracted by everything around us. Um, the news, um, the things that go on in our homes and things like video games or um, dramas or things like that with all this time that we have on our hands. So. Um, let us pray that we will be able to maintain and develop our spiritual and mental discipline in this time so that we can quiet our hearts and our minds and delve deeper into the word um, and spend more time with God so that in these challenging times we will not be shaken and that our faith will be strengthened and fortified. Um, it is during these difficult times that we are truly able to practice our faith. So let us take this time um, to pray for our spiritual and mental discipline. Right, so, um, Lord Heavenly Father, um, we understand that these times are different for us and that there um, may be um, certain things in our lives that um, we enjoy, um, things like um, spending time online with friends or on, um, on video games um, or watching um, TV shows and things of that sort, Lord, and we just pray that um, even in this, all of this, Lord, that um, even though it is uncertain and even though it is um, different for us, Lord, that we um, make sure that we take this time um, to spend more time with you, Lord, that there is no um, excuse of not spending the time of just, of not um, just filling the cracks with you, Lord, but rather just setting aside a time of our lives and our um, day to spend with you, Lord. I just pray for our mental and spiritual disciplines, Lord, that, um, that we may not um, 
be easily distracted or um, sidetracked by things around us, um, but to continue to um, walk with you, Lord, and to um, um, read about you and talk to you on a daily, Lord. And I just pray um, for all of this, all of us, Lord, um, that we may not uh, be so um, drawn to all the other things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, so my third point is that um, in this time of uncertainty and fear, um, let's pray for God to bring us healing, comfort, and peace to all that's affected by the current pandemic. Um, these times are very different and there's a lot of uncertainty and possibly fear. Um, but one of the things that we should never lose sight of is in all of this is that God is the greatest healer and that he can do the unfathomable. So um, let us pray um, for the, um, the healthcare workers on the front line um, that God will provide for their needs um, in being able to protect themselves when dealing um, with this pandemic and for all those that have been um, infected our, and the families that are affected with the deaths um, that we would bring, that God would bring comfort to them and for everyone else in this time for peace that uh, we may be um, opening our ears to um, our governments um, so that we can um, listen to what they're saying and all the other things that are given to us. So let's take this time to pray. Um, Lord, Heavenly Father, um, we want to lift um, this current situation up to you, Lord. Um, and all of the um, suffering around us and all of the, the news and the um, and the things that are happening, Lord, it's, um, it's scary and um, it's uncertain, it's unprecedented, and um, it can bring a um, certain kind of uh, uneasiness to our lives, Lord, but... Um, Lord, I just pray that um, we never lose sight of who you are in all of this, Lord. Um, that even though there's all a lot of suffering and a lot of pain out there, Lord, that every day that we have is the Lord, is the day um, that you have made. Um, and I just pray for um, all those that are affected by it, um, whether directly or indirectly. Um, we just pray for those who are currently um, sick with um, the disease, Lord, that um, you would bring your healing hands upon them, Lord, and just provide the families with the um, peace and the um, strength and the um, 
the charge to uh, get through all this, Lord, that um, that you are the great physician, Lord, and that you can heal those that you want, Lord. And we just pray for that. And we just pray for those who are affected that they may be in um, in comfort, Lord, that they may not be in a very painful situation, Lord. And we just um, pray for all the healthcare workers, Lord, the physician, the um, nurses, the, uh, the technicians out there, Lord, um, that as they are on the front lines, Lord, that we that you protect them um, in all ways possible and provide for them in their need for uh, personal protective equipment, Lord, um, that that they may be able to do your work, Lord, and that you will protect them in doing so, Lord. And I just pray for um, just pray for the news outlets, Lord, that um, they may receive information um, correctly and diligently put that information out and not to install fear and concern into the public, but to reassure them that um, that with all this information that's provided, that it's true, Lord. And I just pray for um, our local governments and our state and our national governments, Lord, that um, um, that you may provide um, cle uh, clear thought in all those who are making decisions, Lord, that they may be able to do so without any um, ulterior motives to politics, to um, to benefit their own selves, Lord, that they may um, consider the needs of the people first before anything else, Lord. And I just pray for our leaders, um, that you may work through them, Lord, and I just pray for all of us, um, that even though there is a lot of uncertainty and um, fear, just pray for um, for the peace and for um, for calm um, in all this, Lord, that we may be able to be um, clear thought um, in our thought, clear in our thoughts, and um, all that we do. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Um, so this concludes our Sunday morning prayer. Um, just stick around, and uh, worship service will start soon. Thank you.
All right, uh, welcome to another special uh, online edition of EFCOC English Service. Uh, right now, I'll start off with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity where we can we can just uh, spend some time with you, Lord. Even though we aren't in the same building, but Lord, uh, through the use of technology, Lord, we can worship you together. And uh, right now, I just pray that you just uh, just meet us where we're at, wherever we are, Lord, in our home, in, in bed, maybe. Um, but Lord, just wherever we're spending time right now with you, um, just meet us there. Uh, and also pray for just everything that's going on um, in the world today, Lord. Uh, pray that your hand is in everything. And also just uh, lift up everything, uh, the service to you. And uh, Lord, just, uh, yeah, um, be with us. Pray in Jesus' name, amen. Sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation his empire shall bring. Joy to the nations when Jesus is King. Sing to the King. Sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation. His empire shall bring joy to the nations when Jesus is king. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring that we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of grace, singing now the voices praise to Jesus. Sing to the King. For oh, His returning, we watch and we pray. We will be ready. The dawn of that day will join in singing with all the redeemed. Satan is vanquished, and my Jesus is King. Come, let us sing a song. Song declaring that we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up the heart of grace. Singing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. Returning, we watch and we pray. We will be ready the dawn of that day. We'll join in singing with all the redeemed. Satan is vanquished, and my Jesus is here. Come, let us sing a song, a song declaring that we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up the heart of grace, sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King. Come, let us sing a song, 
and proclaim of the Proclaim a love for He is faithful. He is glorious. And he is Jesus alone. My hope is in him. He is Freedom he is healing right now. He is hope and joy and love and peace and life. He is faithful. He is glorious and he is Jesus alone. My hope is in him. He is freedom. He is living right now. He is hope and joy and love and peace and life. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever breathe. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you, Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life 
Lord, we sing to you this morning. We declare that your love is the firm foundation that we stand upon, that we rest upon. We pray, Lord, that in this time uh, where many things are uncertain and unstable, that we would rest and rely upon your faithfulness. We would trust in you. In your promises, we would remember how you have worked and how you have proven yourself good and dependable in the past. And we would believe that, God, you are the only rock and fortress and refuge for us. May the world feel your presence. May we understand that you are the one that we can rely on. May your church be a steadfast beacon of hope and light to this world. May this service today be glorified to your name. May you be honored in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Welcome, EFC Orange County, to our online service. And it's good to be uh, together worshiping today. Uh, I'll be presiding for this service. Um, we have just one announcement. Uh, this Today is Palm Sunday, if you didn't know. Um, and, and so that means this coming weekend, Friday uh, is Good Friday, and we have a special service. Uh, we will be using Zoom. So if you haven't been joining us on Friday, uh, we get together and uh, Andrea provides the, the link on Facebook and we will be having our service uh, this Friday at eight o'clock. So please join us uh, if you're not regularly there with us on Zoom and we'll be trying to do communion together. So um, I'll post another announcement on Facebook so that everyone can pre prepare for that. Uh, but if you can um, save some bread or some juice that you have at home, uh, we'll be using that this, this weekend. And then on Easter Sunday, uh, we're gonna join a bunch of other ESC churches 
online, of course. And there is a special pre-recorded e-service that will be presented by EFC General Assembly. Uh, we'll be watching it with a lot of our sister churches in the denomination. Uh, so that's a heads up for this uh, this weekend. All right. So with that, without any other announcements, um, yeah, today's message is we're continuing our series in the Lord's Prayer, Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. Title is The Rightful King, and I'll be speaking. So uh, here we go. As I mentioned, today is Palm Sunday. And if you didn't know what Palm Sunday was, uh, it marks the beginning of what many call Holy Week or Passion Week, what I was just describing earlier. And this is the Sunday when Jesus entered into Jerusalem and he was greeted by festive crowds waving palm branches as a sign of triumph and honor. And they were all cheering and shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they believed that Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah, the promised king who would come to rescue the Jews from the hands of the Romans. So of course, they didn't realize that Jesus had actually come to suffer and then die on a cross to save sinners. Palm Sunday was soon lead to Good Friday and then to Easter. I didn't plan this, but I think it's kind of fitting that today's message happens to be about our King. So as I shared earlier, we are going through the Lord's Prayer in this mini-series while we're having these virtual services. And this is Jesus teaching his disciples how to pray. We've been looking at this for the past couple of weeks. And he began with this address, our Father in Heaven, or Heavenly Father, if you will. And that just reveals this close personal relationship that we have with God as his beloved children through faith in his son. And then last week, we looked at hallowed be your name. In other words, you are the Holy One. And we want all of creation to recognize your greatness. This is essentially worship. It's giving God the praise, the honor, and the adoration that he rightfully deserves. And next we have what we might consider like a pledge of allegiance. Matthew 6 verse 10 goes like this. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So you have God's kingdom and you have God's will. We're familiar with these words. Unlike the word hallowed last week, which is almost never used, these words are commonly mentioned and heard when we pray. And yet our understanding of them may be somewhat vague and unclear. I'll give you an example. So there's a phrase, flatten the curve. You've probably heard or seen this phrase mentioned repeatedly on the news and all over social media. And I think we all know what it's referring to. But without any context, flatten the curve could have a very different meaning. I was just thinking about it. It could be a slogan, a great slogan for some new diet or workout program. Like you go from a curved belly to a flat stomach. In the same way, we want to have a better idea of what God's kingdom and God's will are referring to, especially since Jesus includes them in his model for how to pray. So first, what does God's kingdom refer to? I think we need to back up and first ask, what does a kingdom consist of? Well, you got to have a king, the person who is ruling often wearing a crown or sitting on a throne. And then there are people who are under his reign and rule. You might call them subjects or servants. People who are submitting to his authority are loyal and obedient to him. And finally, there's a place or region of some sort that marks the extent of the king's sovereign rule. A good example, this is the Disney's Lion King. Uh, it's a little old for, for some of you, but 
Uh, Mufasa is the king, at least in the beginning. And all the other lions and all the other animals are under his rule, although his evil brother Scar wants to be king. And Mufasa's kingdom includes what he says, everything the light touches. When you have people and you have a place where a king is recognized as king, then you have a kingdom. Now the kingdom of God is a richly complex theme that's woven and developed throughout the Bible, really from beginning to end. And yet Jesus, you revealed that the kingdom of God is simple enough that even a child can get it. God is king. Scholars and theologians have described the kingdom as already here, but not yet fully here. Now I'll pack this for us. It's already here in the sense that Jesus, he came as the humble servant king, finding the lost sheep, feeding the poor and the hungry, healing the sick, casting out demons, raising the dead, and proclaiming the good news that all of God's promises of salvation, restoration, blessing were now being fulfilled in him. Then he went and he he conquered sin through his death on the cross. That was Good Friday. Three days later, he defeated death through his resurrection. That's Easter. And then he commissioned his disciples, the church, to continue advancing God's kingdom by preaching the gospel through the power of the Spirit. That's the book of Acts. And in this sense, the kingdom of God is already here. At the same time, though, it's clear that the kingdom is not yet fully here because we're not witnessing and experiencing God's perfect righteousness, justice, peace, and blessing on earth. God is surely sovereign and he is king, but the world that we live in is still very much in sinful rebellion. It's very much in chaos. God's kingdom will be fully here only when Christ himself returns, what we call the second coming. So this prayer, your kingdom come, it really reflects first a eager expectation for the king's return. We want Jesus to come and establish his throne here on earth. It means we're looking forward to that day when everything in this world is perfectly under God's righteous rule. Now, we don't know when this will happen. So the Bible calls us to watch and to wait with eager expectation. What are you eager for these days? Now, I've been watching the news pretty much every day. And waiting to see and waiting to see when the numbers of infections and deaths finally begin to slow down. I'm sure we're all eager for this crisis to end so we can start the process of getting back to some normalcy in our lives. This pandemic has caused so much hardship and suffering for so many, and it looks like it will continue to do so. Of course, we're all eager for this to be over. But when this passes, this will still be a fallen and broken world. There will still be inequality, injustice, crime, war, suffering, sickness, disease, and death. Are we eager for Jesus to return and to set up his kingdom? Do we have the hope and expectation of God's kingdom in our minds as we pray? That's the first thing I want us to think about when we pray your kingdom come. Do we have this eager expectation for the king's return? But as we're waiting, your kingdom come also expresses a genuine desire 
for God to be recognized as the king, even as we wait. It's desire that we want unbelievers and believers to surrender to God and to serve him alone. We want to see more and more hearts confessing that God is king and that we want, we're obeying him, beginning with our own hearts. Now, we're used to thinking of sin as like a violation of God's law. We're breaking his commands. But at the heart of our sin is actually a desire to rule our own lives, to be our own king. This is why sin is referred to in scripture as rebellion against God, because God is the only rightful king. Now, you and I, we may not think of ourselves as kings. We don't walk around wearing crowns and thinking that we are royalty. But we often live like we are the absolute rulers, that we are the monarch and the, the king over our lives. Especially if we're adults and not under our parents anymore. We think we can do whatever we want, whenever we want, and however we want. Our time, our resources, all belong to us at our discretion. We also have this tendency to build our own kingdoms. We want, we want to establish this perfect, cozy life that we think is the most satisfying, the most pleasing to us. And once we've built that nice, comfortable, stable situation for ourselves or achieved that status, We'll, do, we'll often do everything we can to protect that kingdom. Let me ask you, are you looking to build and protect your own kingdom? If so, then we're going to struggle to pray your kingdom come. The question is, do we really want God to be king in our lives? Do we believe, do we really believe that we are better off, that this world is better off, that everything is better off when God is recognized as king. Do we really want his kingdom to come? Because that's what this prayer is expressing. It's a genuine desire for God to be recognized as the king. Now, even more than God's kingdom, we, we hear and we use the word God's will in our prayers. God, if it's in your will, or Lord, show us your will, or let everything go according to your will. Whether we realize it or not, our tendency to mention God's will in our prayers, it likely stems from the idea that Jesus expresses here with these words, your will be done. So what does God's will refer to? If we back up again and ask, well, how do we define a person's will? The basic idea of a will is what a person wants or desires. Each one of us has a will of our own. We all have our own wants and desires. Conflict and disagreements are proof that we don't all have the same will. Our wants and desires sometimes align and overlap, and they can also clash and diverge. Like God's kingdom, the concept of God's will is this constant theme in scripture that can seem at times amazing and awesome, but also mysterious, confusing, and, and difficult to wrap our minds around. And yet it can be also boiled down to this, what God wants. But to be more precise and helpful, Scholars, theologians believe that scripture shows that God actually has two types of wills. Not two different wills, but two types. His moral will and his sovereign will. Let me explain. The moral will of God refers to the righteous character of God that he desires and deserves to see reflected in us as his people. The sovereign will of God 
it refers to God's authority and his ability to accomplish his desired purposes through the means that he chooses. Now I'm going to explain them side by side for a little bit because it will be helpful to see the contrast in their features. His moral will is also known as his revealed will. It's made clear to us. His moral will is expressed to us in his word. His sovereign will is also known as his secret will because it's mysterious. And his sovereign will is experienced by us in this world. His moral will is what should ideally happen in our lives. His sovereign will is what actually happens, either because God caused it or allowed it. His moral will is what is pleasing to him all the time. And his sovereign will is what is permitted by him according to his timing. Hopefully that helps you to, to see these two categories of God's will. But I think a case could be made that Jesus is referring to both here. So first, this prayer, your will be done, it reflects our hope and our confidence in God's sovereign will in what we are experiencing in this world. Just to bring it, to bring it home for a moment, I'm sure we've all seen magnified images of the coronavirus. Through a microscope, the virus has these little spikes resembling, some say, a crown. The word corona actually comes from the Latin word that means crown. And this virus has rapidly taken over the world and taken over our lives. It's claimed thousands of lives and it's crippled economies. Every news story seems to be tied to this pandemic. It feels like we're living under the reign of this coronavirus. And as for when this crisis will be over, some are hoping by Easter and that Obviously, it seems like wishful thinking. Social distancing has been extended to the end of this month, at least. Some believe this could last through August. And the most prominent doctor in this crisis situation has been Dr. Anthony Fauci. You might have seen him on the news or read about him. He's an expert on infectious disease who is also on the White House's coronavirus task force. And Dr. Fauci was quick to remind everyone, you don't make the timeline. The virus makes the timeline. And his point is that we, can, we can't just decide when we want this crisis to be over. The testing and the rate of infection will give us a better idea of how long this crisis will last and how we need to respond. Now, as a medical expert, he's giving us the plain truth. But as believers, as God's people, we know that this crisis is under the sovereign watch of our God. So we respect the virus, but we shouldn't fear it. We recognize its ability to spread and infect and even kill the body. But ultimately, God is king. He's sovereign over our lives, and he's sovereign over the virus. So the virus can't do anything outside of God's sovereign will. Let's remember this and remain confident because we know the king who is in control. Now at the same time, your will be done. These words are also a genuine surrender of our will to the moral will of God. To do what God wants. Let me illustrate this um, with something that we've been seeing at home recently. In our family room, some of you have been to our house, we have this big dark blue canvas painting that Christine made above our family room couch. And it has these words in white. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It comes from Joshua 24:15. Now, whenever it's time to feed our boys, Carter and Cody will be drinking their milk, right? and their eyes will often be glued to the verse 
on the wall. Now it's mostly because newborns have limited visual ability. So they're drawn to the strong contrast between the dark blue and the white text. But Christina and I think it's funny because they have this quizzical look on their faces every time. And every time they're drinking and eating, they want to look at the verse. We like to think that they're studying the Bible as they eat. But over time, it's true. They will get so familiar with this verse. And we're glad that they're getting this exposure to scripture so early in their lives. We hope that they embrace this verse and the meaning behind it as they grow up. That we're here to serve the Lord. That we want to say, your will be done. You see, in Christ, we are not only God's sons, we are also his servants. And if we find great joy in having God as our heavenly father, we'll find the same joy in serving him as our king. Maybe the simplest way to describe the kingdom of God is this, that everyone finds joy in living according to his will. In other words, that everyone is doing what the king wants. Now, why doesn't Jesus just stop with your kingdom come, your will be done? Why does he add the next phrase on, on earth as it is in heaven? It's clear God's kingdom is not fully established here and that his will is not being done perfectly here on earth. Ever since the beginning in Genesis, when sin entered the world, things on earth haven't been as they should be, as God would have desired it to be. No, you know, Satan's been ruling in his own way. Man has been constantly trying to be king at all costs. And there's this constant battle between God and Satan. And also between our will and God's will. Our flesh is constantly trying to get on the throne. But the Holy Spirit in us, thankfully, is trying to mold us into servants of God. God who is our rightful king. So Jesus says we should seek God's kingdom to come and God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because you think about what makes heaven so great. Yeah, we often you know, think about going to heaven and where everything will be awesome and everything will be glorious and everything will be perfect. But what makes heaven so great is actually not just that God's presence is there. The reality is he's present here on earth too. But the difference is, in heaven, you have his perfect reign and righteousness. In heaven, there is no sin and no rebellion. Like, no one's trying to challenge God's authority and sovereignty in heaven. No one's trying to take his crown or sit on his throne. God is the unquestioned king, and all the angels know that, and they're rejoicing. In heaven, everyone is serving God and absolutely loving you. And we know that isn't always the case on earth. So this is why we pray for God's reign and his righteousness here on earth as it is in heaven. Now in closing, we've gone through the Lord's Prayer so far. And it goes, Our Father in heaven... Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. What have you noticed so far in the Lord's prayer? We haven't asked God to do anything for us yet. It's all about God. It's his glory, his name, his reputation, his kingdom, his will. You know, this makes a world of difference in our prayers, not to mention our relationship with God. When the things of God come before my things, or even better, when God's things become my things. Too often in our minds, our minds are racing with all our worries and needs and wants. 
But Jesus shows us that this is how disciples must learn to think and pray and live. With God's kingdom and God's will at the forefront of our minds. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that you're worrying about and thinking about for yourselves, it will be added to you. God will take care of it. When we acknowledge and reflect on who God is, how great, how worthy, how good, and how faithful he is, just like we've been seeing to this morning. And we choose to worship him by seeking his kingdom and his will. Just imagine what our posture, our perspective, and our priorities will be when we actually get around to asking him for things. Because that's what we'll be looking at in the weeks to come. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are the Holy One. We declare this morning, as your church, as your people, as your sons, but also as your servants, that we want your kingdom to come. We not only look forward to the day when Christ will return to establish his throne and to reign on the earth, but we also are praying that our hearts and more hearts in this world, more and more people would recognize you as king every single day, and that we would not only recognize and confess that you are Lord, but that we would live like you are king. We also declare your will be done. We want to surrender our lives to doing what you want. And we also want to remember to be confident in the midst of whatever circumstances we are facing or looking at in this world, knowing that your sovereign will is greater than anything that is going on in our lives and in this world. We learn from Jesus this model prayer to praise you, to honor you, to worship you before we even think about the personal things that we would like to see in our lives, the things that we want, the things that we need. We humble ourselves before you, God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, trembles at his voice. How great is our God, see with me how great. God, so we'll see how great, how great is our God. Age to age he stands, and turn is in his hands, beginning and the end. Oh, we'll see how great, how 
Yes, Father, you are the great God over this earth. You reside in heaven, in your holiness, and yet you also are deeply personal. As our Heavenly Father, you are close to us. You are also worthy of all worship. And this morning, we honor you as our King. We sing to you. We present our lives to you. We give you our hearts and our, our allegiance. We say your will be done. We pray your kingdom come. You are the hope of this world. We know that nothing in this life will last forever. But we know that your kingdom is eternal. We pray that Jesus would return soon. But we also pray in the meantime that we would recognize you as king more and more so in our lives. We would honor you, we would revere you, and we would serve you. We welcome you. We pray that this week, as we reflect and we prepare for Good Friday and Easter, that your name would be exalted in our lives. That we would be seeking to honor you through your death and resurrection, we celebrate with the churches all around the world, bringing praise and glory to your name. In that name we pray, amen. All right, that concludes our service. Uh, just another follow-up on Good Friday. Uh, so I mentioned that we're going to be on Zoom and the link will be on Facebook. If you don't have Facebook, and I know some of you uh, may not have an account. Uh, you can message Andrea and she'll provide the ID for, Zoom, uh, for the Zoom account, for the Zoom meeting. Okay. And uh, yeah, 